somewhere where everybody could go. Everyone could go, whether they were Protestant or Catholic, and it really, it's probably one of the only places where, where you can mix without any cares whatsoever. Without ice hockey, you know, I think life would just be Catholic and Protestant and you wouldn't see it from a different perspective. And I wouldn't have met Andrew the way, you know, I wouldn't be friends with him the way I am. If we hadn't gone into the ice hockey here in Northern Ireland, me and Paul definitely wouldn't be where we are today. There'll always be a risk with Paul and Andrew being friends, but it's a risk that they're prepared to take. At the very start, we actually thought it was like a myth. We had been hearing this for years. The ring's gonna be built, the ring's gonna be built. But then all of a sudden, blocks started getting laid down and uh, you just seen walls starting to, to build up. The next thing you know, it's the opening night and you've got a team of people that you've never met before in your life and you're watching them and supporting them. Giants have brought this phenomenon to Belfast that I don't think you're ever going to take away. The first time I went to an ice hockey match with the Belfast Giants, the atmosphere was just incredible. I've been to football, you know, soccer matches, but you know, nothing like this here. Players that came across, the majority of them would be Canadian. There, there seemed to be uh, personalities that developed uh, within the sport, and they interacted with, with the fans. They went across to the schools, and I think people appreciated that, and they became household names. Life here in Northern Ireland is like a divide. Catholics and Protestants, it's like a divide between both of them. And uh, it's, that's what life's like in Northern Ireland. Every day you wake up to a divide. I don't know too many neutral people. It's always been there's different areas where there's Protestants and different areas where there's Catholics. It's scary to go into certain places because you just don't know what could happen to you. You don't know, you know, whether you're going to get beat up or stabbed or murdered. You just don't know. And these things have happened here and, you know, I'm sure they will happen again. I just love to go over to Canada and skate on a lake, you know, and just play professionally, make money out of it, you know, use it as a job. For what time you've been leaving at and when you'll be home? And... Oh, uh, I know that I'm going at six, but I'll ring you from the camp to say what time I'll be home at. Uh -huh, right. I'm 15 years old. I'm a Catholic. I go to a mixed school. I live on a mixed estate in Belfast. Amory and I live on a mixed estate because basically um, we're of different religions. A lot of the families are in the same boat. 
they would be mixed and it means saying that you're not on a Catholic estate or a Protestant estate and we feel more comfortable with it. Okay, Sam. Cheerio. Don't be late. Okay. Give us a call if you're moving. I'm 15. I live in Belfast. I'm a Protestant. I'm a good day mixed school. And I live in the Protestant estate. Well, when I grow up, definitely want to play ice hockey. Definitely want to be an ice hockey player for in the NHL. Like, if I stick hard at it, someday I might get there, but if I don't, then I'll just keep trying for a chance. It's the closest thing to home, anyway. He just loves it. That's his number one sport. does play other sports, football and basketball, but he's, ice hockey is his number one sport. I think ice hockey has broke down a lot of the barriers between, you know, different religions and the way children think. It certainly has brought them closer. I first met Paul at school because Paul was in my class. He was in my class, but I never hanged about with him. Like, he had his mates and I had my mates, and I wouldn't really talk to him much. I remember Paul talking to one of his friends about taking up hockey and overheard. I went over and I said to Paul, I'm going to on the same night. And he says, oh yeah, and then we just got interested and started talking. And then he said, right, well, I'll meet you up there then. And that's really how our friendship started. And they sort of stuck pretty much together because they seemed to be competitive with each other at first. You know, there was this wee bit of competitiveness, um, which grew into a friendship. I don't think uh, Paul and Andrew are doing anything special unless you remember that it's in Belfast. Um, anywhere else in the world, there's just two wee guys um, who met playing ice hockey and are friends. It's only in Northern Ireland that the factor that they're, one's a Protestant and one's a Catholic comes into it. They're not doing anything unusual. It's Belfast, it's not usual. Last night, paramilitaries attempted to disrupt the peace process by leaving a bomb in the city center. Army bomb experts carried out a controlled explosion on a device left in front of the courthouse. felt quite weird when I got my first hockey boots because of the rockers. I got the hang of it in the one or two weeks I was able to skate about. And uh, Paul was improving the game, so he's always a step ahead of me. I only started ice skating three years ago. I'd always seen in the Donald ice ball, the ice rink, but I'd normally go bowling. So one time we went ice skating you know, I got the hang of it really quickly and started doing lessons. I'd done a level one in figure skating and I didn't, you know, realise that there was a hockey. So my dad was saying to me that there's a hockey lesson. And so I said, yeah, I'd prefer to do that. Ice hockey is special in Northern Ireland, I think, because it's, it's still a minority sport. Um, you get to dress up in lots of cool gear. That's certainly the way the kids think of it. It's quite a rough sport. It's quite a skillful sport. It doesn't have any sectarian connotations. And you get to, to meet lots of different people from absolutely everyone. When you're on the ice, you don't really think about Protestants or Catholic. You just get on to play the sport with whoever's there. Ready, one, one, ones again, same thing. I want you to start like this, all right? Looking at me.
Think you're going as fast as you can every time, all right? Ready? Here we go. Go. Great back, great back. I know the players really enjoy it because they feel they're giving something back. They know that the bloodline is coming through those children. And especially here in Northern Ireland, they have to get out there and encourage those youngsters to come up through the ranks. That'll teach them. Okay, give me one of those. Give me a push again. Start there. But I want to see you get down, cover the, keep your stick on the ice. Start on the inside of your post. One hard push. One hard push. Are you going to coach? Andrew's small, although he loves basketball. And the fact that he would be smaller than most people that play basketball in school, you know, you can still get it around a lot of people, and he would have a lot of skill in that way to get it through his legs or get down the ground quicker or whatever. He's good at sports. Me and him like a lot of the same things food-wise. Like if I was ever come home from school and mom says, what do you want for dinner? I'd say what I want. You know, I'd know what he would want. Six aside, including the That's one thing we've never had a disagreement on is food. Paul has different things about him. That he's always lively and like going to other people who are just dull and walk about with their head down. But he's always and lively and he know, he's tell me anything. Andrew's he's very witty and he doesn't get angry easily. That's one good thing about him. And you know, he'd never be in fights or anything like that. We both text a lot. Well, he maybe texts a bit more than me. You know, he's normally got a new phone because he's got a ways of getting around and trading in phones and getting money back and then getting a new phone. Paul's, like, interested in different kind of music style than I am. Paul's in a band, which I'd never join. Normally, Andrew would stay at my house because it is a mixed area. But I do stay at his house. But you know, my mum worries because she's afraid that something might happen because it is a Protestant estate and I am Catholic. So, you know, she'd be worried. And it's just, that's one of the bad things, you know, because I can't even stay in my friend's house without taking precautions. It's just, you know, it's hard. It's just not. No, it's just not a thing to like about Northern Ireland. Someone coming to Belfast for the first time wouldn't straight away notice any markings of sectarian division. But if you stray off the, the sort of normal beaten track, or if you stay here for any length of time, you'll start to see various tribal markings, as you might want to call them. You'll see curbstones painted in one color or another. You'll see flags at every lamppost. You'll see various paramilitary murals. Seeing the symbols, it's, well, I see them every day, every single day of my life. You pass them, whether you're in the car or you know, 
seeing all the flags, which in big Protestant areas you can see a lot of flags, or Catholic areas you can see a lot of flags. If I'm going through a Protestant area, it can be scary sometimes. Paxton Schulte Day is special because he's always been in the Giants team from the very start. He doesn't take any nonsense on the ice. He's very skillful as well as being aggressive. I've never seen him take a cheap shot. And I think he's a good example to the kids. You know, he shows them how the game should be played. Yeah, I like Paxton. He's very good, tough and rough, but... Uh... I'd love to get my own back on him someday, and hopefully I'd love to get to play with the Giants as well. He's a good coach as well as a good player, and he's always been my favourite player in the Giants from my first time I've seen them, because he's one of one with the most humour in the team. That's your team. You wouldn't know he's Canadian until you hear him to speak, because he's just like everyone over here. I think at the very start, when the people set up the Belfast Giants, they saw that the only way to gain um, good crowds would be to make it non-sectarian, because any sporting events that are sectarian are very poorly attended. Catholics and Protestants in this country don't get all on, but using it through football, they're just different methods of getting at each other. One always wants to be better than the other, and that's why they're always fighting against each other. They use football as a cover-up story when they're ranting, just to get at each other. Hustle up. Okay, you guys are pretty much warmed up, so we'll do a, a little bit of a skating stretch. Just start with some sculling. Out and in. Here we go, down, touch your toes, hang. All right, ready up, one leg. Out, change leg. Try and work on your balance. Outside to inside edges. Forward. Backwards. Backwards. Forwards. Right. Two hard left. Let's go. Hockey's just like a free time to relax and play a sport and have a bit of fun. And then just when you're finished, you're disappointed because you have to come back to what's all here.
When I'm in Andrew's estate, there's quite a lot of precautions to take, not to reveal your religion, and, you know, not to say too much about your background or anything like that. To my knowledge, there's no Catholics live in this estate. Some of the children do go to Paul and Andrew's school. So I was a wee bit worried, maybe one of Andrew's school, maybe pupils seeing Paul and, you know, telling somebody else that there's a Catholic in the estate. Some of my concerns when Paul would go down to Andrew's are if he talks about mass or the scouts, because that type of thing says I am a Catholic. And I really would prefer Paul didn't let people down in Andrew's estate know that because I would be worried about him playing out in the street. I know he's very safe in Andrew's house, but I would be worried about him playing out in the street. He's pretty smart and if anything did happen, he'd make sure that I can get the best safety I can. And whether it's to ring home or even ring the police, he would definitely do it. You know, if one of them threatened him for taking his mobile out, he wouldn't care, he'd do it. Yeah, I am quite careful, just in case, cause maybe I don't know strangers who think that that's not right, he shouldn't be with him and do something about it. I just make sure that everything's, nothing's gonna happen. Right, I'll have half a pause. No. It's up in your head when you meet someone new, all the Protestants, they're Catholic, because it's a big thing here. Like, I don't care less what they say they are, Protestant, they're Catholic. There's even a Buddhist in my class, right? But you couldn't tell the difference. You'd think he was brought up here. So you don't like the shout it out in your face, what are you? But English. if you got to know them English. really well and then you asked, you'd get your answer. And it's just not there no more and you know what they are and it's not bugging you to find out. But you don't need to know unless you're going to do something about it. I just over it. Over it? You would find out someone's religion by hmm. finding out where they live, like names as well. Obviously, Seamus is an Irish name and... Andrew's a Protestant name, and sometimes you can find out by the hairstyles. Catholics mainly have a shaved head with a fringe going like that. Catholics would live in Falls Road, places like that. Protestants would live in the Shankill and this estate, for example. Football teams such as Celtic and Rangers, Celtic being Catholic, Rangers being Protestant. You know by which shirt people are wearing, whether they're Catholic or Protestant. You may see people walking up the street in a Celtic top. They're not going to do that in a Protestant area. They're going to do that in a Catholic area. I was on my own Rangers top and there was loads of people in Celtic tops and I'd start to worry. 
because they'd probably st want to fight because they know I'm on my own and they'd single me out. A 21-year-old wearing a Celtic football shirt has been taken to hospital after being assaulted. Up to 20 youths wearing Rangers shirts attacked the man. An 11-year-old boy was attacked because he was wearing a Rangers football shirt. A gang of youths ripped off the shirt and set it on fire. Police are calling the attack sectarian. You go down to the Odyssey, it brings the two sides together because you don't know who's sitting beside you, you don't know who they are, but you know, hey, we're all here cheering on the Giants and it doesn't matter where you're from or, or who you are, you know, we're all there for one purpose and that's to support the Giants. and for children, ice hockey is definitely a safe zone and neutral. Um, nobody cares about what's going on outside that rink. And for those two hours, you're wrapped up in a game and you could be anywhere in the world, um, apart from Belfast. The peace line is the wall between where Catholics live on one side of the wall and Protestants live in the other side of the wall and, you know, things be thrown over, like petrol bombs and all sorts of things thrown over the wall, just, you know, at the other people's homes where kids go out and play. That's also a tourist attraction where a lot of people come to see and they sign their name on the wall because there's loads of names on the wall, just like when the Berlin Wall was up, but they just put it up so to stop the Protestants and the Catholics fighting. It does keep people apart, but it only serves to divide them even further than they already are, because you can throw a, bot you can throw a stone over the peace line, but you can't get to know anybody across the peace line. estate with Andrew, if I'm down at my granny's or anything like that, which is a Catholic estate, I just tend to not go too far. There's a few shops, just head down to the shops. When Andrew goes into a predominantly Catholic area, it's very rare. So it's an occasion where you know where he's going, you know who he's with, and my advice to him is to say nothing, avoid crowds of uh, youths hanging on corners. Just don't get involved in things. I'm just thinking about, I have to watch myself and be careful, and <laughs> just to watch what I say, in case anything could happen, because I'd be singled out, because I'd have nowhere to go. But they all have, because of my Catholic estate, then they have all their contacts, or whatever you want to call it, then I could easily be harmed in a bad way. I try not to worry about it too much. I can go out at the front of a granny's house and play football or whatever, because it's a pretty closed area. I know Paul had always 
back me up if I needed help for me. I stay close to him and talk to him a lot, and I will try to reassure him and just by keeping his mind busy and all the different things. And to see him look over and see Celtic shirts or, you know, tricolor or anything like that there. So I'm more aware of what he's feeling, you know. Some people do be concerned about friendships between people who are of different religions. I suppose it's a fear factor. I think some of them worry that if their children become friendly and, and start to realise that um, all Protestants don't have horns and all Catholics don't have tails, that somehow their own beliefs will be eroded. When I'm coming up the pole with a puck and going to fart, I know I'm probably going to try and score. And if I know I'm not going to score, I'm going to hit it at him as hard as I can, just to get the laugh out of it anyway. But he always knows it's only, it's only for fun. I see the red helmet, so I always know that it's him and that he's coming just to wait to shoot on me. And he doesn't just take big shots, you know, he tries to take me and try, he sometimes even does, puts it through his legs and try, you know, try and get it around me and stuff. It's, I have more fun with him than anyone else, you know, because he tries to do different things to get past me. I'm going on Sky Camp this weekend and I will be setting up camp. We have a competition coming up in a few weeks, so you know we'll be getting ready for that. What? Many socks. Uh, Four. Two. No, the kids will get wet. Three. Andrew has said before that he'd love to join the Scouts, but as it being only Catholic, you know, he wouldn't be able to join mine. Are you sure that would be enough? Oh, that'd be it's only going for two nights, dear. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll always bring too much well. anyway. Like, and at least we're going to Mass. You'll need your black trousers. The stories I tell him of the fun we get up to and stuff, he's really interested in what I have to say, and he would like to be in it. And it's just a pity that there is a divide in that, that he cannot even go into it. I've seen people going to the Himalayas with this. Be careful when you're away. Dip, dip, dip. Yeah. Make me so proud to see you. Right. Yes, got the keys. Let's go. The fact that I can have fun and he can't because he's a different religion. Well, that's something that you know just needs to be sorted out. Just dump it in the back there. Crowds gather, they watch the bonfire being lit, loads of wooden pallets, and and then the whole thing go up in flames. I know it's a celebration what Protestants do, but at the same time it's a celebration against Catholics. Protestant community has bonfire, just something that our ancestors have been doing all through the years. And it's just to show that they're still there. Like, probably a sign of respect or something. 
for the people that died in battles to save the keep of passing religion going. If Paul came to Balfour, I'd always be watching out just to make sure. If anyone found out and it got around to the wrong kind of people who were drinking or anything, then it could get out of hand and some harm could be done. If we went to bonfire with people that were from the other religion, I would feel really, really uncomfortable because that's their big celebration. And, you know, you see on the top of the bonfires them burning tricolours and you know, I, I, I just wouldn't like it at all. And, you know, I don't think it could actually stay in front of a bonfire. After a night of bonfire celebrations, the smoke is cleared from the sky as thousands of people in Belfast prepare to march in the annual Orange Parade. On day out, and it's just if you think about it, it's just a game and sign of respect for people who died for you, keep passing and letting go. Well, we didn't fight Poles because when we're present, we're fighting, it was against the Catholics. And I know we're trying to get past all that, but you still have to have your own wee bit of your own religion as well as mixing through, so I don't think you feel comfortable in that environment through all presence. When I see the parades happening on the news, you know, I don't take it personally or anything like that. And feeling that Andrew's at it, that's, you know, it's fine with me. It's something, you know, he just really enjoys. It's not something that the rest of them think that want to get out of anyone or march them down any roads. You know, he just wants to see parades and have a good time with his friends or anything, you know, and which is, it's all right for me. Driving past the Catholic Markets Estate, a five-year-old child was hit by a brick when it smashed through the car window. The boy, wearing a Rangers football shirt, was returning home with his father from an Street. orange parade. A brick shattered the backseat window where Curtis was sitting. It struck the child on the face, severely injuring his eye. Police are in no doubt this attack was sectarian. <laughs> has really made Belfast almost smaller to me. Before I played ice hockey, it was just two different parts, you know, a Catholic part and a Protestant part. And then you go to Dundonald, there's a Protestant area, but in the center of it, there's the ice boat. And when you're inside the ice boat, everyone's mixed. When you're in there, you're out of the Protestant area. <laughs>
My personal worries would be if the process here didn't work, that Paul and Andrew further down the line. If it gets to the wrong ears um, and people take a, a grudge against Andrew or Paul, um, they could make life really difficult for their families. It wasn't that long ago that two unfortunate boys were shot dead because of their friendship. One was Catholic, one was Protestant. And so that's an awful worry. I mean, if that can happen once, it can happen again. You can't fight the gun. Last night, the troubles came with a vengeance for the first time to points pass. Around nine o'clock, two gunmen went into the railway bar. Caught in the line of fire were two close friends. Philip Allen, a Protestant, had just asked Damien Trainer, a Catholic, to be the best man at his wedding. Like Andrew and Paul, those two lads had been best friends. They grew up together, they worked together, they socialised together, as will probably Andrew and Paul. And they were just in the wrong place at the wrong time. They were both shot because of their friendship. I think of those two boys probably more often now because of Paul and Andre. I would think more of it. You know, if Paul and Andre weren't together, I probably wouldn't think of it so much, but it, it reminds me of a situation, you know, that Paul and Andre could be in if we're not careful. If things don't get better here, that's the kind of future we've got to look forward to. Ah, Craig, what about you, my man? Just knock on the door and that lady will let you in.
you look on ice hockey as a facility that can be used to draw people in, like a magnet. And you have these people all being drawn in and they're just mixing with people. But the likes of Andrew and Paul, the message that Andrew and Paul could give the politicians is, hey, you know, if we can do it, anybody can do it. I don't know, I feel too slow at all. All right, well, fax it. They really don't see the problems because they have friends of different religions and mostly that's probably come about through ice hockey. They can see beyond what most of the the adults and kids who have no Protestant or Catholic friends, they can see further down the road, they can see what normal is. Paul and Andrew on their own won't make people change. But if there's more Paul and Andrews, maybe that will make a difference. And Paul and Andrew will pass on their views to their children. Andrew doesn't seem to lose friends easily, so hope he doesn't lose me easily, or I don't lose him, so hope we do be friends for a really long time and remember how we played ice hockey together and continue playing ice hockey together. <laughs>